Welcome to this edition of The Lead. I'm Nadia Cox. Let's get started. In 28 days, President Joe Biden has signed more than 50 executive actions. Let's peek into the political corner to find out more. The majority of the executive actions President Biden signed since taking office have been focused on the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, including a mask mandate in federal buildings and the creation of a COVID-19 response coordinator. Other executive orders and memorandums have been signed regarding immigration, equity, and the economy. Roughly 19 of these executive actions have been reversals of former President Trump's policies. Both within and outside of the United States, tensions are rising. In this week's installment of The Global Review, the lead's Jolina Esperto tells us more about the proposed travel ban affecting Florida and the continuing revolt happening in Myanmar. Welcome to The Global Review. I'm Jolina Esperto. Here are your top stories. Elected officials in Florida are against reports that the White House is considering imposing domestic travel restrictions to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Governor Ron DeSantis says it would be unconstitutional for federal officials to place travel restrictions aimed to avoid the highly contagious variant first identified in the United Kingdom. President Biden will freeze the withdrawal of U.S. troops from American bases in Berlin. Biden reversed a measure implemented under the Trump administration, which would have withdrawn 9,500 troops out of the 34,000 currently stationed in Germany. U.S. troops have been stationed in Germany since World War II. The continued American military presence in Germany aims to promote transatlantic security and cooperation between the two governments. And in Southeast Asia, military is now back in charge in Myanmar. A year-long state of emergency has been declared. The country's elected leader, Aung San Suu Kyi has been detained since her party won a general election. The armed forces had backed the opposition who were demanding a rerun of the vote, claiming widespread fraud. The election commission said there was no evidence to support these claims. I'm Jolina Esperto and those are your top global stories for the day. There's a lot of excitement circling the new COVID-19 vaccines across the globe. Many people don't know what to expect once it becomes available to them. The lead's Chris Will has all the information you need to know, including if you qualify to get it and where it's being distributed. The COVID-19 vaccine rollout began here in the United States in mid-December, but there's still a lot of questions surrounding the process. Here's a little bit of what you need to know. The two FDA approved vaccines are made by Pfizer and Moderna. Trials have shown that the Pfizer vaccine has a 95% efficiency rate and Moderna sits at 94.1%. Both vaccines require two doses, which are taken three to four weeks apart. The state of Florida is currently in phase one of distribution. This means that you can currently get the vaccine if you are a long-term care facility resident or staff, a healthcare professional with direct patient contact, 65 years or older, or a person who health professionals deem vulnerable to COVID-19. If eligible, you must schedule an appointment at myvaccine.fl.gov. You can also visit the Florida Department of Health website to find vaccine locations in your area. Additional vaccine locations can also be found across the state at grocery stores such as Publix, Walmart, and Winn-Dixie. It's important to note that whether you get the vaccine or not, the CDC still recommends you wash your hands, maintain social distancing, and wear a mask. For The Lead, I'm Chris Will. New student groups are forming on UF's campus to call for traffic safety. The lead's Isabella Leandri took an inside look at one of the organizations fighting for change. Florida students are advocating for change on University Avenue after the recent deaths of two students over the course of two months. Florida Not One More is a student-led group working to pressure public officials to take action and improve traffic safety. With Sophia Lambert's death, I was actually at the light um, on Buffman Drive and Sophia and her friends were to my right and I saw the whole thing happen. I had my windows down. Um, I heard everything, saw everything. And that's not something that I don't think anyone should ever witness or anyone should ever go through for that matter. So I felt like I was placed in a position um, for that reason, just after what happened to Maggie, what happened to Sophia to make change. The group is urging students to contact the Florida Department of Transportation and call for a speed limit change from 30 to 20 miles per hour on University Avenue. Even though it's a 10 miles per hour difference, it makes a difference because it could save a life. The hashtag Florida Not One More has been circulating around social media and is being posted by U of students as the movement continues to grow. It's been great, honestly, seeing the 
the involvement and everyone wanting to get involved because people are really passionate about this. Their efforts have already contributed to additional safety measures, including heightened police presence and more pedestrian signage. The student-led activism is already affecting positive change, but the group hopes to continue its efforts in making University Avenue a safer road for pedestrians and drivers alike. For The Lead, I'm Isabella Lee. Looking for a way to celebrate Black History Month? Many are doing it by supporting Black-owned businesses. One unique way that some choose to commemorate is by tasting the culture. 3K Barbecue, Wayne Head Southern Kitchen, and Swamp Religion are just a few of the businesses thriving in Gainesville. Several new businesses launched this past year and have quickly risen to financial success. The owner of Fat G's Barbecue and Catering, Gregory Brown, says this is one of the best years of his life financially. To discover more local Black-owned businesses, you can visit wuft.org and get the full story. It's Girl Scout cookie season. This year, getting your share of Thin Mints and Samoas may look a little different, but the Girl Scouts of North Florida aren't letting the pandemic interfere. Junior at PK Young and Girl Scout of 10 years, Darian Paisano will be adapting her usual method of in-person booths to include Grubhub orders. Paisano's troop, Troop 107, is also considering drive throughs to eliminate contact. Paisano is excited to see how many e-commerce orders the troop will get and if it will meet her goal of 1,500 boxes. The Girl Scout Gateway Council's Chief Executive Officer, Marianne Jacobs, says the Girl Scouts have been working tirelessly to create in-person booths that follow CDC guidelines. However you get them, Girl Scout cookies will be sold until March 21st. That's it for this episode of The Lead. You can always follow us at WUFT News on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. This Friday, stay tuned for our very first episode of Leading the Day, a new lifestyle edition of The Lead. I'm Nadia Cox. Thanks for watching.